Both of those being anti pdl one antibodies. I'm going to ask Dr. Liu. We uh, are coming off the tail of the, our first virtual ASCO meeting this year. And at that uh, meeting, we saw the presentation of uh, two trials with PD-1 inhibitors, Keynote 604, uh, with pembrolizumab and um, the um, ECOG trial, which was actually a phase two trial with nivolumab. And I'm just wondering if you could walk us through those and give us your impressions. Yeah, sure. So these are, are two randomized studies and we saw results for the first time. The, the phase three trial you mentioned, Keynote 604, this was presented by Dr. Charlie Rudin. This was a, a very well-designed, randomized, placebo-controlled, uh, large phase three trial. It included patients with previously untreated stage four small cell lung cancer. Uh, all patients received platinum etoposide, uh, allowed either carboplatin or cisplatin with a one-to-one -one randomization to concurrent pembrolizumab or placebo, uh, followed by maintenance pembro or placebo. Uh, the study had uh, 453 patients. Uh, of note, the vast majority, about 70%, received carboplatin, and it had dual primary endpoints of progression-free survival and overall survival. What we saw at ASCO20 was the final analysis. And in that analysis, Keynote 604 was positive in that it hit its progression-free survival endpoint. The PFS favored pembrolizumab, a uh, median of 4.8 from 4.3, the hazard ratio there 0 0.73, the one-year PFS rate from 5% with placebo to, to 15% uh, with, with pembro. But unfortunately, overall survival did not cross the threshold for superiority. There was a numeric difference, median from 9.7 to 10.8, hazard ratio 0 0.80, uh, but it did not cross that statistical threshold for a positive OS benefit. Uh, it's interesting, if you take away one patient who uh, inadvertently received the wrong treatment, uh, it was a positive trial, just to show how close it was. So I think what we learned from Keynote 604 uh, is that there is activity there, comparable in the same ballpark as what we saw with pdl one and Empower-133 uh, for atezolizumab and Caspian for Dervalumab, uh, but unfortunately, uh, this will not impact current practice because it just did not improve uh, survival. While the trend was encouraging, it just didn't quite hit that. Uh, the ECOG study you mentioned, ecog Acrin 5161, was presented by Tiziana Leo. And this was a randomized phase two through the cooperative group. Um, it, re it accrued remarkably fast. Uh, and this study looked at platinum etoposide with or without nivolumab. Uh, no placebo, uh, choice of platinum. This was a smaller study of phase two, 160 patients, and this study accrued in seven months, quite remarkable. Uh, primary progression-free survival, um, uh, primary endpoint was progression-free survival, and that improved with nivolumab from 4.7 to 5.5. That's a hazard ratio of 0.68. So even though a relatively modest side study was able to show a PFS benefit and able to show a survival benefit, the OS hazard ratio there is 0 0.73. And so a smaller phase two, positive for both PFS and OS. Uh, you know, and if these two studies were the first to report, I think it would be much bigger news. In a world where we have multiple randomized phase three trials showing an OS benefit with atezolizumab, dervalumab, uh, unfortunately, no immediate impact in our clinic. 